Hello, in this as a hard setup video, I'm going to show you how to set up this 3DS emulator on your Windows machine. I've got separate videos covering how, covering how to set it on Mac, for example. Feel free to check them out. This video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. So there's a few things that we'll need to download. We need to download 7-Zip, which is great for extracting many, many different files. You don't always need it, but it's great to have, especially when you, you know, get hold of ROMs. They might not always be in a regular zip file that Windows can extract. You know, you'll need the Visual C++ redistributable to get the best compatibility as a heart, and then your games as well. So let's just go through, you know, getting a hold of all of them. So on this Microsoft website, which I will provide a link in the description, you scroll down, you go here and you select which one you need, ARM64, x86 or x64. Easy way to find out is if you type in dxdiag, click on command. Once it opens up in system, just see what it says for operating system. If it says 32-bit, you'll need x86. If it says 64-bit, you'll need x64. And if it says ARM, you'll need the ARM one. I just need the regular 64-bit version. So I just click that, it will download. I've already got it, so I'm going to leave that. Next, we need 7-zip. Click download. And again, similar process on here. Check which one you know you need. For 32-bit, it's this one. 64-bit is this one. 64-bit ARM is this one. So download that. Then same, you go on Azaha emulator. And you just click download MSYS2. Just click the you know, latest one. And yeah, that's it. That's everything downloaded. You like I said, you will need games as well for legal reasons. I cannot show you where to get hold of those games, but honestly, if you just go to Google, like type in 3 ds ROM, you'll find find them. And in general, if you have any questions throughout this entire video, anything at all, feel free to comment down below. So let's just go ahead and install everything. So click the 7 zip file, yes install it feel free to change the directory if you don't want it in the default directory and i've already got it but you can just click install and you'll just go through the install process find this is probably the, the application that'll take the longest to install in this process click azaha install it and yep keep going and you know what i already have it installed i'm gonna uninstall it so we get a fresh version of as a whole so I can show you on install there we go let's install this feel free to put it in a different location I'm going to leave it in the default location Okay, now let's deal with the game. So if you just right click and you can just click extract all as you know, show more options as well. So if you wanna to go to 7-Zip, extract two. 7-Zip will probably give you the best performance as well compared to the built-in tool. But I say that the built-in tool has gotten a lot better over the years to be fair. So if we open this, inside we'll get this .cci file. So another thing to know, your games have to be decrypted. So there's two type of game files with Azahar that you can use .cci, and you just run these directly, .cia, and those files you have to install, but you can, a lot of the time, when you get hold of these games, the format, don't rename this, I'm just gonna show you something, it'll be in .3ds, like so. Azahar does not run this anymore. Uh, so what you have to do, Assuming you have a 3DS file or .3DS that is decrypted, you can simply rename it to CCI, like so. And then we can copy that. I recommend putting it in a you know location that is organized. I put it on my SD card, and or you can put it on an external hard drive, ROMs, 3DS. I've already got it there, so feel free to paste it. Next, we can launch up as a whole. Okay, so, um, yeah, you, otherwise, I, I must have already had some settings. What you, uh, ignore the update, you would get like a, it was a say double click to add an application directory. So I can just click this to add it. You're gonna go to your ROM, 3DS, click select folder, right click, you can do scan subfolder so if you have other games in there. So if I go to my SD card, ROM, 3DS, 
and so what do I see I've got a 3ds file and this one decrypted it is so if I rename this see so as you can see it didn't appear cci there you go uh yeah so it's unsupported encrypt apparently it's still encrypted that file even though for it was decrypted but yeah you gotta make sure it's decrypted if you do have these issues to install dot cia just go here install cia or you can load a file in directly if you are tested so before we launch up a game let's go to configure and there's a few things that we want to have a look at for the most part you can leave this as is for the emulation speed leave that 100 percent. so that's just how it runs by default for the turbo emulation it'll by default it'll be 200 percent. i like to whack it up to about four or five hundred percent and this is just when you go into turbo mode it how fast the game will run the main reason you want to use this is to speed through cutscenes that can't be skipped or intros that can't be skipped it's great for that and in system make sure enable new 3ds mode is enabled you can change the username the region and the time but apart from that you can leave it feel free to emulate the camera as well in graphics you want to change the internal resolution by default it will be native you can up it to four or five times but what i would recommend is go native see what it looks like and what performance you get if you get good performance then increase it i know people on youtube say you know just increase it you know just go straight to 10 like they say oh you can go up to 10 times yeah if your hardware can support it yeah you know you got the monitor which is the limiting factor as well and but the main thing is your hardware so try an 80 first i know like four or five times works pretty well for me you can change the text filter change how the game looks feel free to experiment see which one you want the only other thing i want to show here is if you get really bad performance you can disable right eye rendering and this will give you you know a boost in performance but it's, like i said it can cause flickering so otherwise leave it if it works fine and for the layout i will actually show you this in game so you can see what this all does in advanced this will by default be open gl select vulcan if you have a relatively new modern graphics card in the last few years if you are trying to do software rendering you might want to do open gl or software and async shader compilation will be off enable this this just helps with stuttering and you know if you have any built graphics card and an external graphics card select your external everything else you can leave the way i have it audio hle fast output device go to auto definitely not non output device again just i always leave it on auto and then feel free to change the microphone as well and in controls we can now create our controls so first of all you have profile and these profiles are great for different games different users different genres and if you want to remap a control you click that let's say if i want to press a b Panels already bound, so it doesn't overwrite it as well. Uh, where is B? Put that as I for now. So B Z X Y and the D pad output. I think that should get us started. And you know, feel free to map all the controls. I can can I can confirm PS5, PS4, Xbox controllers, Nintendo Switch, even Wii controllers do work. Pretty much anything that's Bluetooth or USB will work. So you just go through the process of clicking the button, pressing the key or the button on the controller or the external device, and you're good to go. You can also map hotkey. So for load states, uh, uh, you know, increasing the speed, etc. Feel free to do that. Apart from that, we're good. Click OK. Last thing I want to show you, if you right click your game, go to properties, in here you can overwrite the settings. We have the global settings, but if you know, oh, okay, you know, this game, I can get it up to eight times on my hardware, change the game setting, not the global setting. So have your global setting the way I have it, then, then change settings on a per game basis. Because online you'll get information about which games run well, how to get them to run well as well said so, well many times then so we're ready to run this so if we just click double click it and your mouse will act as the stylus which is pretty cool what i do have is a load state for a low state no i must have oh i uninstalled i don't have the low state anymore <laughs> yeah i was thinking why where's my low state gone that's funny 
and yeah we're not connected we can know that so you can see because i've increased the internal resolution it does look a lot sharper okay as it's about to load now i want to show you uh, soon what the different view modes are like okay so we've got both screens on go to view not full screen you can go to screen layout so when you have like a wide screen like this which is what you'll probably have on your computer you probably don't want it like this it's not the best experience you've got single screen i mean unless you absolutely do not need the bottom screen at all the the input screen you're probably going to want to maybe large screen so this is large and this is small uh, but again you know it can be a bit difficult depending on how big your monitor is and if you have a mouse on if you're using touch screen makes it even more difficult you can go screen layout there side by side as well which is again a good compromise in separate windows which is really cool so if you have you know another monitor like stacked you could essentially try and emulate how 3ds or hybrid screens do custom layer swap screens as well you could even rotate it so maybe you have a monitor that you can physically rotate so it's in you know portrait mode and then you can have the one on top of each other i might actually try that and create a little youtube short but that's it you know i quite like my favorite is the large screen one for most games so let me just get into the game show you it working I never did properly map the controls. Controls. Uh, I think it's this one. Let's, yeah. This is so annoying. Uh, I'll just clear it like this. So a lot of other emulators and applications when you do that you're either doing multiple mapping or you'll just let you wipe the original one as you can see it's working nice we get the frame rate at the bottom obviously if you don't see any of this you can go full screen yeah these emulators have come a long way since where they used to be You don't know what to get me. Might as well complete the level now. Whilst I'm here. So as you can see when I got that big coin it went into the bottom screen I mean the bottom screen which is on the right so it's good to have that screen still visible in my opinion I don't have the yeah what those I would have been able to get the top that, that was it the hedgehog or the whichever one they added where you can essentially kind of float for a few seconds but yeah that's it I want to show you one one more thing forgot to emulation I go to save state slot one and I stop emulation double click so it's launching the game back up from the start if I go to emulation now load state load that state we'll cover that warning in a second it takes us back to where we left off which is great so if you're in the middle of a level you know or some games even if you finish the level you can't save after every level you have it's like every few levels especially on some certain mario games you, you know you do have that issue so feel free to use the save states 
that warning that popped up it's just warning us that it should not be used as a long-term saving mechanism the main reason is these saves can get incompatible with new versions of any emulator i've always had that issue so it's great as a short-term thing always use in-game saving so if something happens your in-game saves should carry over between updates um, but that's it if you have any questions feel free to comment down below if you like the video give it you know a thumbs up hit that subscribe button uh, hit that notification bell to be informed of more videos and i look forward to seeing you in the next one take care bye